Good evening and welcome to the Church of St. Peter. Please join us in singing our opening song, O God Beyond All Praising, page 547. Please stand. gathers God's family to celebrate this 14th Sunday in our ordinary time. So we begin now in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. With your spirit. And now as we gather around the table, Lord, we pause as we acknowledge your sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Well, mighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us all now to everlasting life. Amen. And glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you. We bless you. We adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. O God, who in the abasement of your Son have raised up a fallen world, fill your faithful with holy joy. For on those you have rescued from slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Zechariah. Thus says the Lord, rejoice heartily, O daughter Zion. Shout for joy, O daughter Jerusalem. 
See, your king shall come to you, a just savior is he, meek and riding on an ass, on a colt, the foal of an ass. He shall banish the chariot from Ephraim and the horse from Jerusalem. The warrior's bow shall be banished, and he shall proclaim peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, you are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are in the Spirit. If only the Spirit of God dwells in you. Whoever does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. If the Spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the one who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his Spirit that dwells in you. Consequently, brothers and sisters, we are not debtors to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, Jesus exclaimed, I give praise to you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for although you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned, you have revealed them to the little ones. Yes, Father, such has been your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father. And no one knows the Father except the Son. And anyone to whom the Son wishes to reveal him. Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am meek and humble of heart, and you will find rest for yourselves. For my yoke is easy and my burden light. The Gospel of the Lord. And good evening. It's my privilege to present to you, I suppose, um, a vision of our church that hopefully each and every one of you will at least acknowledge and perhaps even support. So I will be speaking to all the masses, and I in order for me to not to forget things, I need to be stay up here with my notes. So if I don't go down, it's not that I don't like you anymore. It's that I, there are certain points I'm supposed to make. I was reading that gospel, and I find it quite appropriate for me personally for the last six months. It says, that, come to me all you who are weary, all who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. I need to hear those words over and over. Especially since we've been thinking about undertaking a major capital improvement here at St. Peter. In fact, we're in the midst of a planning study, just looking at the future needs of our, of our parish. For me, I would like to look at it as a labor of love and a labor of service. Although using that term labor means it's a heavy burden to carry. The neat part about it is I don't have to carry it by myself. I have this parish family as whatever we do, we'll always do together. One of the things that came out of some of our planning study was a statement that really sort of swelled my head with pride. The people running the study have said on many differing occasions, Father, you have a very vibrant parish. And I just want to say, I know that. I've known that for the last 12 years. And one of the driving forces of this vibrancy is our embracing that whole Stewardship as a way of life. In this new way of living as a parish family, we recognize that everything we have, everything that we are, is a gift from God. And to the extent that we recognize this gift and truly return it with gratitude and thanksgiving to the giver of these gifts, our God, to that extent, will God continue to enrich us with his blessings? And I think one of those blessings is this vibrant church. So together we embrace the future, knowing that each of us depends upon one another, as well as our God, 
who's enriched us so much. As I said, this future, future improvements, as far as I'm concerned, is a, I see it as a labor of love. You know, we could sit back on our laurels and say, hey, what a great job we've done. We have money in the bank, we're not in debt, and all is well. That to me was quite an inviting temptation. But there's one thing missing in that scenario, namely some needs of our parish family. You know, one of the things several years ago, I'm not sure exactly, 2005, I guess, where you had the Living Stones campaign, you remember that? I thought, how appropriate was that project named Living Stones? Because it called each member of this parish to be a living stone of this parish structure and some, somehow contribute their time, talents, and treasures. And what happened after you did? We got a beautiful narthex. Now, the only thing is, is that the air conditioning isn't working in the narthex. It will be after this week, but it's one of those things, things only last so long. But nevertheless, it will be working after this next week. We also built some kindergarten classrooms in our grade school. And I only hope and, remain, I only hope and pray that we still have those living stones continuing here today and each of you are one of them and commit yourself somehow to our current improvement plan. And one of the things I really want to dedicate whatever we do this year, I want to dedicate it to Father Augustus Tolton, a former living stone of this parish who just now has what I would call a change of address, namely eternal life with God in heaven. Now in preparing for this planning study, the one hope that I have heard in this parish, and it's coming from you, not me, in the 12 years I've been here, is that there are very few spaces for meetings. And the ones we have are either not big enough or they are in use by other groups. So I thought, well, it would be nice, wouldn't it, to have a parish center? Second, there was always a concern by many people, and they've told me, seeing the kids leaving their school building, come over to the basement of the church to enjoy their lunch. And with activity in the cafeteria, it truly became a distraction up here for any kind of spiritual events that were taking place. So the first thought was to build a, a new cafeteria that would open up the space below and keep our students in our school. And so I thought, well, the other thing that we needed was some classroom space. It became apparent that St. Peter's was attracting many differing students. In fact, so much so that last year we had a, a third kindergarten. Where do we put them? So we had to move the library from the, the, in the school over, guess where? Down below here. And so our kids would be trekking along to go to the library. And so the whole concept of somehow creating more classroom space became a reality for all of us. And with all the visions that have taken place, the goals that have been set, or at least we've been thinking about and praying about, we've sort of put some things to, to the book, to the, the architects sort of presented some figures. Now, I want to be personally honest with you. I was overwhelmed. I had no idea. And whoever thought that, and then they said, somebody would say to me, well, if you only built it five years ago. Well, we didn't. 
we're sort of stuck. And it's, apparently it's not gonna get any better. And so I understand people's concern about the cost. I have the same concerns. And I won't, build a, I won't begin a building project until, in a sense, we're able to pay for it. I'm not gonna go in debt. So, and a lot of these, a lot of different thoughts have come recently from people who have been responding to our planning study. And I greatly appreciate it, because it causes me to think outside the box even more so. How we could provide what we need, and yet make what, what we have something that's, that's needed too. So as I said, we've learned an awful lot. Then we've learned several concerns, and I, I appreciate them more so than you will ever know. First concern is, well, Father, you're going to build something, and then you're going to retire. Well, my brothers and sisters, there are some things I can't control. I don't want to retire, but I don't, that's not in my control. I have to follow canon law, have to submit my letter. I've sort of hinted at and talked to the bishop and We'll see how consistent he is. But as long as I feel like we have a building project going on, I'm hoping to be able to stay for a while more. Okay, so I can't, but I can't promise, that's out of my control. The other thing that people have been concerned about is QCES, the Quincy Catholic Elementary Schools. Is that gonna be a reality? Someday I hope so. But everything that we're planning in priority one is something we need right now. Not later, but right now. And I think because it is a priority right now, we need to consider that. And so what we're asking you today, and I hate to do this on you, but you've been very good. There are little in-pew surveys. We even gave you some pencils. Now that's not for your golf carts. Okay, keep the pencils in, in here. But I ask you to pick, to pick one of these up. And a lot of times we're asking for your, ad, your cell phone, emails, because part of our stewardship as a parish family is to be able to communicate with you. And sometimes, guess what? Things change. Cell phone numbers change. Addresses change. So I'd like to have you really print these uh, Use the pencils that we have, and I'm gonna give you five minutes to do it. Use the pencils that you have, and pass them around to each other, and then fill it out the best way that you can. As I said, it should take you five minutes, and hopefully um, it'll, it'll help us more so. Now, I suppose the only exception to the rule of the gathering here would be those who are not parishioners, unless you're willing to support us in this effort too. We're happy to have your survey. But whatever the case, I want you to consider doing that and then filling that out. And just know we appreciate your input. Because like I said, this is what it means to be a living stone of any parish. This is what it means to be a, a vibrant parish where everybody's involved. And then, if you will, there's envelopes in there in your pews. Just place them in the collection basket, okay? We'll give you five minutes to do that.
Okay, I thank you. And please place those in our collection basket, if you will. And if you want to take one home and send it back in, that's fine. That's not a problem. If you want to do the ones online, it's, we ask you to do they're a little bit more in-depth, maybe. And you still have those that were mailed to you. So we just want as much input from this vibrant parish, from these living stones, as we can have. Okay? And then a couple other announcements before I forget it. Remember these things? They're in the, they're in the narthex. These are what, back to school help fairs. And we're always so very generous in our community in this effort. So consider that. And the other thing is, if you haven't got your picture taken for our parish directory, 7 o'clock to 1 o'clock tomorrow, you can, it's walk-ins. So you don't have to even make an appointment. Just walk into the grade school, and they'll snap your picture. We want to see who you are. Okay, and how you aged so gracefully. So let's stand now. Together we profess our faith as we say, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, unsubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead in the life of the world to come. Amen. God's family now want to offer these prayers of petition to our Father. For the church, may God help us in being meek and humble warriors for Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who lead governments and communities, may the Lord grant them wisdom in serving their people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who battle addiction and substance abuse, may the Holy Spirit grant them strength and fortitude. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our faith community, may the love of Jesus inspire us in taking up his yoke. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the couple that was married in our church this weekend, Cameron and Ashley Litwiller, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, that they may know the glory and the splendor of heaven, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of our special intentions, especially for the intention of this Mass, Ann Anderson, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Father, we offer you all of these prayers. We ask you to answer them. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, and our Lord. Amen. Please join us in singing the Preparation of the Gift song, Come to Me, page 465. Thank you. 
Pray now, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May this oblation dedicated to your name purify us, O Lord, and day by day bring our conduct close to the life of heaven, closer to the life of heaven. We ask these things through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And lift up your hearts. Lift up Let us give thanks now to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of now being called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness in your own wonderful light. So with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. indeed holy O lord the fount of all holiness make holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall 
so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. And do this in memory of me. And the mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Thomas, John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also all of our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with Peter, and all the saints, Augustus, Venerable Augustus Tolton, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, may praise and glorify you, through your Son, Jesus Christ. And through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command now in form of divine teaching, we dare to say together now. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days. That by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with all of you. And with your spirit. Thank you. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Thank you.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, and blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb.
We have one announcement this evening. Deacon Jake's Eucharist talks start this Thursday at 6.30 p.m. in the church. See the bulletin for more details. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that having been replenished by such great gifts, we may gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Almighty God bless you now, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying our Lord. Thanks be to God. Say, Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection is there with the spirits of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Please join us in singing our closing song, Let There Be Peace on Earth, page 530.